Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. In this tutorial we are going to look at Brunner's theory of development. We essentially continue on with our quest to look at simplifying various approaches to learning and development. Before we begin I'd like to introduce you to a new and innovative service called Simplygram which is a highly rated organic Instagram growth provider. Simplygram will help you organically grow your Instagram and get you 5,000 new followers per month. Please check them out by visiting a unique link provided in the description which grants you a 10% discount. Now, Jerome Bruner was an American psychologist who made important contributions to cognitive psychology and educational psychology. According to Bruner, the goal of education should be intellectual development as opposed to just memorization of facts. He also believed that education should aim at creating an autonomous learning environment with learners essentially learning how to learn. Through his research on children's cognitive development, Bruner proposed three modes of representation which form a part of his learning theory. Now let's start off by looking at what these modes mean and what the actual modes are. So what are these modes or stages of representation that Bruno referred to? When we talk about modes of representation, we refer to the way human beings store and encode knowledge and information in the memory. Bruner believed that all learning occurs through these stages or modes of representation. It is therefore important that these modes of representation are used to actually design curriculum. It applies equally to children and adult learners alike. Unlike Piaget's stages, uh, Bruner's stages are not strictly sequential or based on age. They only translate from one stage to the other. The only reason there is an age bracket associated with these stages uh, is that at a certain age bracket, certain modes of representation are very active and are the, are the primary modes of representation. Now let's look at these actual modes. An active mode. So this mode is based around actions and reactions. The word inactive has the word act in it, referring to this being action-based learning. In this mode, a person would understand objects by performing actions on them and observing the reactions that come out of it. This mode is dominant in the ages of 0 to 1 in an infant's life. This mode is therefore similar to the sensory motor stage from Piaget's stages of development. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Piaget's stages of development, Please visit my tutorial on this topic, which you will find in this channel. Now, an example of the inactive mode would be if an infant wants to understand a circular object, like a ball, for instance, it would actually touch and feel the object and its curvature, and can even put the object in its mouth. And that would be the inactive mode in play. An example of an adult learner would be, let's suppose an adult wants to learn to type or learn to use a bicycle. He or, she, he or she would need to experience this and would actually find it difficult to summarize it you know, through words or symbols, to, to understand it through other people's words or symbols, etc. This is something that would be learned best by first-hand experience. The next mode is the iconic mode. This mode is based upon visual summarization of objects. In other words, we can link our experience with objects to pictures or visualizations. The ability to store a mental picture of an object in the mind comes to play here. This tends to be the dominant mode for children between the ages of 1 and 6. Continuing on with the example from above, the child who needed to feel a circular object can now draw an image of a circular object, a ball for instance, or think of the image of a ball. This mode also comes into play when adults try to learn a new skill 
and would appreciate the use of images and visualizations to aid their learning. It's always easier to learn if you if there are some if there are some visualizations in play to actually aid the learning. The next mode is the symbolic mode. This mode is more flexible than the previous two modes and is the last to develop. In this mode, information is stored in the form of a code or a symbol like a language. Symbols and codes can be stored, classified and manipulated. Continuing on with the same example, the child can use the image of the ball visualized previously and use it as a part of a language by calling the object a ball or as a or as a part of a mathematical equation as well by let's presume calculating its diameter or its radius storing information about an object symbolically can imply storing the object in language form in mathematical equations in musical forms or in any other form so going back to the meaning of modes of representation bruna believed that all learning occurs through these modes of representation we've just discussed. He therefore believed that curriculum should be designed in a way such that students get to directly manipulate objects. They should then be encouraged to construct visual representation of these objects and then the students can use symbols and codes to represent these objects. So learning sh should actually follow a sequence. The sequence should actually be the modes of representation in the appropriate order and because all learning is based around these modes of representation, we come to a concept called spiral curriculum proposed by Bruner. Now, Bruner believed that any subject of any difficulty can be taught to a child at any stage of development. This is now in contrast to Piaget's stages, which advocate that curriculum should be designed in accordance to the stage of development of a child. Bruner stated that any subject can be taught at any stage with a gradual increase in difficulty. What this means is that students revisit the same topic at regular intervals with the complexity increasing each time they revisit it and also ensuring that each learning step is linked to the previous stage and merely continues on. Because of the repetitive nature of this style of learning with increasing difficulty, this style of curriculum is called a spiral curriculum. And this is a very important concept in Bruner's theory and Bruner was a very strong advocate of designing spiral curriculums. We now look at a concept called scaffolding. Now Bruner agreed with Vygotsky about the role of the social environment in a child's learning. Students are benefited by the help and guidance of adults to shape up their learning. They essentially learn by themselves in his opinion but need guidance and support from adults and their learning environment as well. It's, it's called scaffolding because the idea is like scaffolding being used to aid building a structure. Now, if you use scaffolding to build a structure, the scaffolding used is not sufficient. You still got to build the structure, but the scaffolding acts as an aid. So teachers should build a scaffolding or a structure so that they aid the existing knowledge of students, demonstrate the process of learning and then supervise and guide the students as the learning process continues. So these are some of the most important concepts of Bruner's theory. But why is Bruner's theory considered important? Bruner's theory attaches importance to prior knowledge of the student. It doesn't lay as much emphasis on factors like age. Following this model of tra training would ensure that memory and imagination powers of students are developed. It provides opportunities for students to actually come up to a conclusion themselves by doing activities on their own. So they actually learn by doing first 
then visualizing what they've learned and then by interpreting what they've learned. It therefore has the potential of, of, of making the learning process extremely effective. It is, Bruner's theory is therefore considered to be an important step and an important milestone in learning and development theories. Okay, that's all we are going to cover in terms of Bruner's theory in this summary tutorial. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I thank you very much for your attendance. And as always, please like this content, uh, like and support this the content in this channel, subscribe to the channel, and please also do visit the sponsor to this uh, tutorial. And as always, please take very good care of your own self. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.